When I first saw it, I thought I'd ruin my mulch. A few days after pouring a homemade solution over my garden beds, a strange white fuzz started spreading across the surface. Most gardeners would panic, assuming it's mold or decay setting in, but what I discovered next changed the way I think about mulch forever. That white fuzz wasn't a problem. It was a sign that the soil was alive and thriving. It was the mark of a fungal network waking up, and once you learn to encourage it, your garden will never be the same. The white fuzz isn't harmful mold, it's beneficial mycelium at work. What many gardeners mistake for mold on mulch is actually mycelium, the root-like structure of beneficial fungi. These fungal threads form an underground network that connects soil particles, organic matter and plant roots in one living system. In natural ecosystems like forests, mycelium breaks down fallen leaves and wood, recycling them into plant-available nutrients. When you see that fuzzy white growth weaving through your mulch, it means the same thing is happening in your garden. Decomposition, nutrient cycling and microbial life working together. The appearance of mycelium signals that your mulch layer has the perfect balance of moisture, carbon and microbial activity. It means your garden's biology is strong enough to build living soil, not just dead dirt. And if you learn to feed that network correctly, it can supercharge plant growth without chemical fertilizers. The secret to triggering fungal activity lies in what you pour over your mulch. The pour that set this transformation in motion wasn't a chemical or store-bought product. It was a simple, natural fungal activator made from materials most gardeners already have. The Amish and many regenerative growers use it to jumpstart decomposition and feed soil life. It's often called a fungal tea or microbe starter. And the recipe is simple. A mix of non-chlorinated water, molasses, and a small amount of compost or forest soil. So here's the ratio that works best for every 10 litres, yeah, that's roughly two and a half gallons, of water, add one tablespoon of unsulfured molasses and uh, two good handfuls of mature compost or leaf mold. Give it a gentle stir and let it sit for about 12 to 24 hours in the shade. The molasses acts as food for microbes, while the compost actually inoculates the mixture with loads of beneficial bacteria and fungi. When you pour this solution over your mulch, you're not just watering, it's well like seeding your soil with life. Within just a few days, that microbial explosion wakes up dormant fungi. The mycelium begins spreading through the mulch, digesting tough organic matter and linking to plant roots through these microscopic hyphae. That's why the white fuzz shows up so quickly after you apply it. It's a visible sign of life multiplying in real time. Mulch becomes more than just a cover. It actually becomes a living fungal mat. Most gardeners, you know, think of mulch as a passive layer that keeps weeds down and holds in moisture. But in a living system, mulch becomes a biological engine. When mycelium colonizes it, the mulch transforms into an active composting layer that feeds your soil continuously. Every strand of that white fungal network releases enzymes that break down carbon in wood chips, straw or leaves, turning them into humic compounds that plants can absorb. In a fungal-dominant mulch system, you'll notice your soil softening, darkening and, well, smelling richer over time. That's not coincidence, it's humus forming right under your feet. The mulch acts as both food and shelter for the fungal colonies, keeping moisture stable and temperatures moderate. It's honestly the closest thing to forest floor conditions you can create in a garden. Fungi feed your plants differently than bacteria-based compost does. Traditional compost piles tend to be bacteria-driven, breaking down organic matter quickly into short-term nutrients like nitrates and ammonium. Fungi, on the other hand, work slower and deeper. They decompose woody materials, release complex nutrients like phosphorus and calcium, and bind soil particles into stable aggregates. 
These aggregates improve drainage and water retention at the same time, creating a perfect environment for roots. When mycelium colonizes mulch, it forms a nutrient bridge between decomposing material and plant roots. The fungal network captures minerals locked inside organic matter and delivers them directly to plants in exchange for sugars. This is what scientists call the mycorrhizal relationship, and it's honestly one of the most efficient nutrient systems in nature. By feeding the fungi, you're indirectly feeding your plants in the most sustainable way possible. To make this system work at its best, you need the right kind of mulch. Fungi really love carbon-heavy materials with texture, things like wood chips, straw, shredded bark, or even coarse leaves. It's best to avoid mulches that have been chemically treated or dyed, since those can actually inhibit fungal growth. You'll want to layer about three to four inches of mulch on top of the soil, then pour your fungal activator evenly across the surface until it's damp but not soggy. Uh, for gardens with compacted or poor soil, it helps to first spread a thin layer about half an inch of partially decomposed compost before adding the mulch. That layer acts as a fungal seedbed, helping the mycelium establish quickly. After applying the activator, do your best to avoid disturbing the area for a few weeks. Mycelium spreads best in stable, undisturbed environments. In about a week, you'll see white fuzz spreading under the mulch. In another month, you'll notice improved soil texture and better water retention. The mulch will slowly darken from the bottom up as it's digested into rich, spongy organic matter. Don't mistake healthy fungi for harmful mould. There's an easy way to tell the difference. Healthy mycelium has a fine web-like structure and smells earthy, not sour or rotten. It tends to form under mulch or around decomposing material, not on healthy plant tissue. Harmful moulds, in contrast, often look slimy or greyish and appear in waterlogged conditions with poor airflow. If you're unsure, check the smell and feel. Mycelium feels dry and thread-like, while bad mould feels wet and slippery. If it smells like healthy forest soil, it's doing good work. Encouraging fungal growth is one of the fastest ways to build true soil health. Once you've triggered fungal activity under your mulch, the benefits compound over time. Your soil holds water longer, resists compaction, and supports stronger root systems. You'll find that plants need less fertilizer and show fewer signs of stress during heat waves or dry spells. Over a season or two, your garden will begin to function like a self-feeding ecosystem, exactly what nature intended. The white fuzz is your signal that the soil food web is alive and working for you. Don't scrape it off or dry it out. Celebrate it. That's the living engine that turns mulch into soil. If this guide helped you understand what's really happening beneath your mulch, make sure to subscribe to Soil Doctor and share this video with other gardeners who want to grow smarter, healthier soil. Let's spread the truth about the white fuzz and start building gardens that thrive naturally from the ground up.